So I'm one of the first ones to basically to join the project. Uh, me and my one of the colleagues, Eric, who is just there in the corner on the phone, is one of a kind of a project. Um, and I'm, we are delighted that we are here for the great cause. What's life without a challenge? Uh, let's get out uh, and I'll show you exactly what we're doing there. Hi, I'm Sonia. Digging a hole this size in central London is fraught with danger. When you dig such a big hole, there are very large amount of risks because you don't want to, a building next door to come into our space. We have got roughly around 150 people on site. So we have to ensure that every detail is checked and checked again to ensure what we are doing is safe and secure for not only us, for everybody around us. Around the outside of the project, we have a number of buildings, some of them six, seven storey. We have a strutting or propping system to hold back the ground pressures, stopping the ground from falling in. They're going to such lengths because of what the hole will need to contain. At one end will be a machine called a cyclotron. This is where the protons will be accelerated to incredible speeds. Once the protons leave the cyclotron, a series of powerful magnets will focus them into a narrow beam. The beam will be sent into one of several rotating treatment rooms called gantries, where more magnets will target it precisely at a patient's tumour. But the whole process produces huge amounts of radiation. and burying it underground won't be enough to contain it. So we have to design the facility in, with enough shielding to make sure that treatment staff, the parents, the public surrounding the treatment room all are protected and do not get an unnecessary radiation dose. It's crucial they use the right materials. Concrete and steel are, are both very good at radiation shielding, mostly because of their density, the absorption of the radiation produced by the protons get absorbed within the concrete, within the steel as well. To build thick enough shielding, it will take some 3,000 lorry loads of concrete. Delivering concrete from King's Cross, from everywhere. Roughly around 36,000 cubes of concrete Within the wall, we have a reinforcement, which is on either side, sticking up, which are there to hold in place the concrete, which will form the wall. The walls will form a giant concrete maze around the cyclotron and the gantries to stop the radiation escaping. The reason for the maze is built is it has lots of turns in it, which causes the radiation effectively to bounce off it. Each bounce, the radiation gets less and less and less until at the end of it, there should be no radiation coming out. The team map out the position of the maze walls. Then it's time for the concrete. Concrete goes into the pump. Then from the pump, it goes through the pipe, along the platform, to the mast head, and then through this, uh, this beam down to the uh, concrete floor itself. To avoid cracks, vibrating tubes are used to shake out any air bubbles. When the concrete is set, the maze starts to take shape. We can actually see things on site which resemble what we've got on the drawing. You can see up at the end the uh, cyclotron area, and we can also start to see now the shape of the maze. So essentially, you can walk in, but uh, any radiation uh, doesn't have a direct route out. It will take another nine months and 10 Olympic swimming pools worth of concrete to build the rest of the structure. It's a huge undertaking. <laughs> 